I'm breaking, I'm breaking up, breaking up. Yes, guys, you heard me right. Today, I want to talk to you about the fact that I am breaking up with Fuji Film. My goal with this video is really to give you as much information as I possibly can about my experience, as well as what I've heard from other people regarding the Fuji Film lineup, and therefore, you could be in a better position to make your own purchasing decisions and decide, is Fuji Film the right brand for you? Or would it be better to invest your money elsewhere? So stay tuned if you're looking for more information and let's get to it. So let's talk about what drew me to Fujifilm in the first place. First of all, I see Fujifilm a lot like the Disney of digital cameras. And what I mean by this is basically they are genius marketers. They know exactly who they're targeting and what they're trying to achieve with their products. Just go and watch some other YouTube videos on whether or not you should get a Fuji camera or a Sony camera or this or that. Almost every video I watched always said, Fuji is my fun camera. Fuji is the camera I pick up when I want to play with something, when I want to be more creative, when I want to do these other things. Whereas Sony or Canon or Nikon, some of these other camera brands are more of like what people would refer to as their work camera, what they use when they're out shooting a wedding or an event. Whereas Fuji was more of their fun, creative, playful camera. And why is that? Because Fuji does a really good job with marketing. They were like the first ones to come out with all these film simulations that made it really easy and fun. Your pictures were already practically ready in camera. You didn't have to do a lot of editing. You could have these tweaks. So people really loved these features and just kind of went after Fuji because it was offering something different and unique to a lot of other camera brands out there. Not only that, but Fuji has a great retro style. A lot of their cameras have that familiar analog feel with the buttons and the dials and the way you can use it. So it's really easy to understand and it gives you that analog feel even though it's a digital camera. The JPEGs, sure they look cool, but the truth is I still find myself editing with them. And the ones that are already in the camera, they're not my favorite. So I found myself a lot of times having to use film formulas to use other different simulations and things. But if you've seen my other video where I talk about some of my issues with my X-T3, you'll also see that my camera resets on a regular basis. And therefore, I have had to go back through and re-download or redo all of those film settings on a regular basis. So the truth is like at this point, I almost never use the film simulation. The X app does allow you to save certain formulas and be able to reinstall your camera settings from there. Great. I haven't really done much with it. I know you can do it, but I have so many issues with that app. It always tells me that there's a firmware update, but it won't update the firmware. I have problems connecting with my camera like I'm doing right now. Now you can see that a lot of other brands are starting to catch on to the trend of the film simulations because we're already seeing brands such as Canon or Nikon, even with the Lumix and what have you, they give you different options for that. So as these other companies are creating their own color profiles and what have you, it is becoming less of a unique feature of the Fuji cameras. Not to mention, there are plenty of things you can do to create that film simulation look with presets in Lightroom or Capture One and these other programs and post-processing. So that could also be just as easy and maybe even gives you more control in the sense that you are working with a raw file, not the straight out of camera JPEG. Yes, it might include an extra step, but the truth is like how many of us really take those JPEGs right out of the camera and then post them online? Almost every photo, even if I'm using film simulation, I still find myself tweaking it, editing it, doing something to it before I'm posting it on the internet. You have to look at the fun factor, the cool factors like film simulations and what have you compared to practicality and use. Do you need all these extra features? Are they actually getting you to your ultimate goal? Whatever that goal may be, whether you're trying to earn money as a living as a photographer or not. Now let's dive into the practical limitations of the Fujifilm cameras. For example, let's talk about their battery life, the build quality, and of course, autofocus. Now regarding battery life, especially older models like the X-T3, for example, are using this other kind of battery that is very outdated and doesn't last long. Now that's not just 
these cameras, I've noticed across the board with Fuji cameras that the batteries just don't last that long. And again, the other video that I put out there, I had a problem with the internal battery of my camera basically dying within the first two years of me having the camera. I have had issues with third-party batteries in the Fuji cameras. They say that those will cause the bat internal battery to die faster. There's no way of really reviving it. They can go ahead and replace it, but that's a, another bit of money to be able to do that. I remember back in the day when I first bought my Fuji camera, I was looking for a battery pack or something so that I could put it on the camera so that I, I could put two batteries in it. And I wasn't successful in finding that at the time. There have been since other offerings of such for different models of the camera, so perhaps that helps a bit. But overall, battery life with the Fuji cameras has been a huge problem for me. And if you're a professional photographer who's going to spend eight hours at a wedding or an event photographing, well, you better come with a supply of batteries because these batteries will not last very long, especially if you're shooting video. Honestly, this reminds me a lot of like when Apple came out with the iPhone and you would do these updates and what have you and then your battery would suddenly die very, very quickly on you would almost feel like you're being forced to buy the next iPhone. That's how I feel about Fuji as well. Apple could make a phone that would last much longer with a much better battery life, but they realized that if they made it so that their things were dying much quicker and having issues, then more people would run to the store and buy another product or update the product to the latest version and what have you. I'm not saying that's why they're doing it this way. I'm not saying that they're doing it on purpose. If they have issues with the camera, then people are more likely to either get it repaired or go and buy a better version of a camera because they're already into the brand, they're already into the system, and it's a lot cheaper to replace just a camera body than it is to replace your camera body and all of your lenses and everything else. Now, regarding the build quality and the cameras themselves, I've heard some complaints about the weather sealing on a lot of these cameras. Not all the cameras are weather sealed, and even then, perhaps other competitors such as Nikon or Canon are a little bit more rugged, a little bit more durable and built to last compared to the Fuji cameras. And of course, regarding autofocus. I don't know what your experience has been with Fujifilm's autofocus, even after firmware updates and everything else, but I can tell you that my personal experience is it is not up to par compared to its competitors. I have had a much easier time using autofocus on many other cameras. Fuji drives me nuts. I rarely look through my viewfinder because I constantly have to tap on the back of the camera in order to get it to focus properly. And even then I have so many issues where it doesn't focus properly, where it even when I try and use tracking or wide tracking, like I have so many issues with it. I did go ahead and play with the X-H2S. For example, I wanted to ask a bunch of questions about it and try it out because I was considering buying this camera. And even in the store when I was talking to the professionals, they were telling me that actually it's still a little bit of a disappointment when it comes to the autofocus. I was playing around with it and I tried some things, but I still think that the autofocus on these other camera brands is just overall better than it is with Fuji. You see some AI features with some of the Lumix cameras and what have you. And just overall, the way that other camera brands are integrating this AI and this following with the tracking and what have you when it comes to autofocus, it's just ultimately way better than where Fuji is at this moment. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the lens systems and also the sensor sides. Now regarding the lens ecosystem of Fuji cameras, when Fuji originally started releasing their X-Series and what have you, they actually weren't allowing third-party brands to create lenses for their cameras so that people were being forced to buy the Fuji camera lenses, which of course were more expensive and what have you. Eventually they changed that and they released it. It was a little bit of a delay, but then other companies could also produce lenses for the Fuji cameras. So. At first it was very limited selection. You were kind of stuck having to buy the Fuji lenses. Nowadays, there is a lot more options out there when it comes to the Fuji cameras, especially because they're so popular. So lots of other third-party companies are creating lenses for these cameras. So your options there are much better than they once were. Meanwhile, 
you have the APS-C sensor. Now, almost every other brand with this mirrorless series is offering full frame sensors, except Fuji. And of course, there's lots of debates all over the internet about, you know, is really a full frame sensor better than an APS-C sensor? Wherever you stand on this argument about whether or not APS-C is just as good as full frame, I will just say this, a full frame sensor does do better often in low light. It also offers a wider dynamic range and can give you more depth of field and what have you because you have this larger sensor size. But again, if you are a professional photographer, do you want to be shooting with an APS-C sensor or would it be better if you're using a full frame where you just have that slightly better image quality in the end? And the only thing that offers a larger sensor is their GFX series where they're offering a sensor that is so large that it's like comparable to a medium format sensor size. However, those cameras are the highest end of the Fuji line and cost quite a bit more money in order to purchase those cameras. They're not reaching the large majority of the people that are going into these mirrorless cameras. The ones looking for a mirrorless camera, if they want a full frame sensor, a lot of people will choose these other brands like Sony or Nikon or Canon because they're offering full frame sensors with their mirrorless cameras, whereas with Fuji, you're only getting an APS-C. The newer cameras from Fuji, they're coming out with 40 megapixel cameras. It is going to look a lot different. It's going to be a lot more comparable to perhaps if you're shooting with a full frame sensor, but still, it's just something to keep in mind. And remember, if you're shooting APS-C, but with a 40 megapixel image size, it's going to be still a very large file that you are saving and downloading and storing somewhere in the internet uh, or on your hard drive. So it is quite a bit of space that it will take up in the end. Of course, I want to give credit where credit is due. And the insects line is by far the best thing to come out of Fuji. I love instant photography. And if you haven't already checked it out, I have created another video where I go really into depth about the difference between Instax film and Polaroid film. And you can check that out over here and I'll tell you all about my feelings regarding Instax. These cameras are for a completely different market base. They're for people who just look are looking for point and shoot cameras where they can take pictures and then hold those pictures immediately afterwards. Those cameras don't have a lot of bells and whistles. They don't have a lot of complicated things. They're pretty much just point and shoot cameras. And if you're looking for a fun camera, the Instax camera might just be a fun one that you can try out. With all of that being said, I am definitely considering investing my money in another kind of camera and different kind of system and getting rid of my Fuji stuff because I want something that's going to last me. I want something that I can use for 12 years, just like I had with my DSLR from Nikon. I don't know which direction exactly I'm going to go in, but if you have any tips, thoughts, ideas, what have you, please go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below. Also, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to hit that like button or to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss another video from me. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Erin and happy shooting.